What is up everyone? Today I'm going to show you guys my new Lenovo ThinkPad. I recently put out a tweet saying that the next video would probably be a ThinkPad video and a load of you guys got super excited. So I hope this video can live up to your excitement. It's just going to be me sitting here rambling about my new laptop. So maybe some of you will find that more interesting than others. But I know that I've got a fair amount of you guys on the channel that love ThinkPads. So I've been super excited to bring this video to you guys and show you my latest purchase. So, for those of you guys who can't tell from the lid alone, uh, I can't, the model of this machine is the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga. It has various different model numbers in different regions, but this is the original ThinkPad Yoga, the little 12 inch one that came out in late 2013. This is a very, very small and light and thin laptop. It is so much smaller and lighter than anything I'm accustomed to. I'm not coming from an Ultrabook perspective. I'm coming from a I carry a 15 inch daily driver with me. This is a Retina MacBook Pro, so it's not the thickest laptop in the world. It's you know pretty thin for a high end 15 inch machine, but it is definitely a brick compared to this guy. This ThinkPad is so small and sleek. I absolutely love it. It's a delight and definitely a treat for myself. So, this machine was released in late 2013, and that's actually funny. Let's bring my MacBook Pro back into the frame. This is also a late 2013 MacBook Pro. So, both of these have fourth generation Intel CPUs in them. They have, both have Haswell CPUs. So it's definitely a generation that I'm very accustomed to because this has been my daily driver laptop for ages and ages, a good few years now. I think I bought this laptop refurbished in 2014, if I remember correctly. So. They both have Haswell CPUs. This guy has got a lovely little Core i5 4300U under the hood. That is a 1.9 gigahertz chip that boosts up to 2.9 gigahertz. It's a little dual core, but it does have hyper-threading. So it has two cores, four threads, and I believe the TDP is 15 watts. So this really is a true little Ultrabook mobile CPU. Lovely little chip. It of course has integrated uh, Intel HD 4400 graphics, which I believe can share up to two gigabytes of the main system memory. There's no dedicated graphics on this machine. Of course, it's only a little 12 inch. You could get this model with the Intel Core i7-4600U, but I do not have that model. I didn't really think it was necessary to spend the extra money. Plus, I found this for a super nice deal on eBay. I got this for pretty much half of the price that these machines normally go for, just because of a couple of marks here and there that I'll show you guys later. But they're pretty much nothing. This machine has previously seen pretty heavy use. I can tell from the keyboard and the trackpad and things like that, but it is still fully functioning. In terms of other specs, this machine has 8 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3L, which of course is soldered onto the motherboard. This machine came in either 8 gigs or 4 gigs. So glad I've got the 8 gigabyte model. My MacBook Pro is also rocking 8 gigabytes, and I still think, even though a lot of people these days swear that you need 16 gigabytes, bite for a sort of main machine. 8 gigs is plenty for me. It really is. I'm, I'm extremely realistic when it comes to using computers. I know I do a lot of projects where I stick awesome parts in old machines and try and make the best of things and whatnot. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, actually using my system, I'm very comfortable with 8 gigs of RAM. But 4 gigs would be pushing it. It really would. So in terms of storage, that's one thing that lets this particular machine down. And another reason why I got it really cheap. Instead of the standard 128 gigabyte SSD that comes with this machine or the optional upgraded 256 gigabyte SSD. Unfortunately, this particular model has come with a 500 gigabyte hard drive. It is a slow, cronky, loud, clicky, horrible piece of equipment that I'm hoping to get out really soon. I've got nothing against hard drives, but this is not where a hard drive belongs in the year 2017. This is a lovely, thin, portable, lightweight machine, and uh, it'll be even lighter when I get an SSD in here, notably lighter. It's so light anyway that the weight of a hard drive that would be obviously swapped out for an SSD will probably make a noticeable difference, uh, even though it's plenty light enough already. It's just, yeah, super, super light compared to any laptop that I've ever owned before. I'm hoping to change that hard drive really soon, and I'll make a video about that, of course. Uh, I can't make 
make a video about upgrading to 16 gigs of RAM because I can't do so because it's soldered to the motherboard so it'll just be an SSD upgrade but we'll take some performance before and after and it should be pretty fun to take a look at that. So let's move on to talking about the form factor and display of the laptop. Definitely a very very important factor with a machine like this. Let's talk about the display first of all. This is a 12.5 inch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 which is a gorgeous resolution for a 12.5 inch display there is so much space on here and it looks gorgeous this is a true ips panel with a brightness of 400 nits which is incredibly bright on this system everything looks so crispy and so gorgeous colors pop i'm really sorry that the camera is reacting to the display that's of course because it's led backlit and it, you know it's the refresh rate and all that but um yeah it's a beautiful display take my word for it and of course it is multi-touch um it's a touch screen and it's got a 10 point multi-touch um capacitive digitizer and of course it comes with the one of these this is a wacom wacom never really know how to pronounce that with my accent uh, pen which of course is an artist's dream it supports like pressure and all that fun stuff in photoshop something that i'll never be using but i will give you a small demonstration i don't have photoshop installed but i tell you what i do have installed and that is good old paint so the pen is extraordinarily accurate and even in paint which is nowhere near the most sophisticated program in the world it works extraordinarily well and uh, it's this is my first true touchscreen laptop experience and i have to admit it is much better than, than i thought it was going to be everything just works flawlessly and i love it so yeah the pen is great not something that i'll be using but i will be using the touchscreen when i explain why i purchased this laptop later on you guys will completely understand so that's the display what i need to do is give you guys a fresh camera angle to demonstrate the yoga side of things so being a thinkpad yoga that of course means that you can flip this thing about in loads of crazy ways it has the 360 degree hinge so first of all you can use it like a normal laptop or you can use it completely flat if you so desire or you can pull it up and use it in tent mode and if you guys notice when I do that the display automatically flips around and it asks me if I want to use Windows 10 in tablet mode which is very clever if you don't use it in tent mode you can close it up completely and you have a rather large 12.5 inch tablet. Again, Windows asking me if I want to switch to tablet mode. I've got access to my pen on the side, which is super cool. And of course, just like an iPad or something like that, it knows what way you flip it about. So you can even do portrait stuff. You can use the pen, draw, take notes, all that really cool stuff. And the hinges are incredibly sturdy and incredibly strong. I'd read online that they were fantastic hinges, but I didn't expect them to be this good considering the whole yoga thing. I, I was kind of put off yogas to begin with because of how brutal this entire process looks, but honestly, these hinges are extremely strong. Now, one really cool thing about this particular laptop, I'm not sure if other yogas do it. I know that these ThinkPads do. They've got what they call a lift and lock keyboard. So if you take a look at the lovely ThinkPad keyboard, which is a delight to type on, by the way, it's got these traditional ThinkPad sort of smiley face keys, really nice. You can see that there's kind of like a keyboard surround. There's a bed of plastic around the whole keyboard. And if I bend the display back, take a look in between the keys. Have a look at what happens. As I bend the display back, there you go. Lift and lock. I can no longer press these keys the whole keyboard surround comes up to sort of support the keys meaning that you won't have accidental keyboard input when you're using this in tablet mode another thing that happens if you take a look at these two little nubs they come out of the body of the laptop if i put the display back to normal they go sort of down a little bit i believe they come up with the lift and lock keyboard yeah they do they come out and they protrude a little bit more which is super nice so me that means that when you put it down this is another way you can use it by the way you can use it sort of sitting like that and i just can't remember if i demonstrated that way but yeah this is a super cool way to use it and your trackpad and your keyboard are completely um they're not going to touch the desk because of these little feet there are also feet on the bottom here which sort of permanently stay out so that's very nice that is the yoga ability of the of, of the laptop of the laptop so um 
extremely flexible and because you guys can probably tell I'm throwing it around it's a really light machine it's really really feathery and just so nice to hold it's not not a chore at all so let's talk a little bit more about the keyboard I said it's got a lovely classic ThinkPad keyboard which types really well it, it's also backlit which is extremely welcome so loads of features packed into such a small system FN spacebar just like all ThinkPads you get two brightness options so this is on max brightness right now FN and spacebar turns the keyboard completely off and then hit it once you've got a low brightness hit it again you've got a high brightness very nice keyboard backlit very very welcome I find it extremely difficult to bring myself to purchase a laptop that doesn't have a backlit keyboard these days we've really been spoiled um, over the past few years with features like that so it's so nice to have them um, also in the top of the screen here, there is a webcam. Not too sure what the specs of the webcam. I've never even tried it or used it, but it is there, which is nice to see on a business grade machine. And of course, because it is a tablet-y type computer, um, you do have the little home button, which uh, this machine shipped with Windows 8. So if you were to press that button in Windows 8, it would, of course, bring up the entire sort of tiled metro interface, whatever you call it. But with Windows 10, it just brings up the start menu. It basically replicates the Windows key. Um, so that's there. I think they may have taken that button away from uh, the latest lineup of ThinkPads. Uh, ThinkPad Yogas, I should say. Moving on down, let's talk about the trackpad. Now, this is an interesting place where I'm probably going to spend a little bit of time talking about it. There are no buttons, which is kind of a letdown. They've brought some buttons back at the top on the latest models. This one has the track point, which is really nice. It also has the trackpad, which feels really nice to use. It's multi-touch as well, so you get all of the gestures, um, at least scrolling and zooming I've used. I assume you can do rotation and stuff. Um, by this point, other manufacturers have figured out how to do the sort of um, multi-touch trackpad thing. This is definitely a very, very good trackpad. As you guys know, Apple really do rule when it comes to trackpads. Most people love those multi-touch trackpads. This is a very, very close trackpad experience. The track point gets its own buttons at the top, but they're not dedicated buttons. As you guys can see, you do get left and right click. However, the entire trackpad moves down. So you're essentially using the same buttons as left and right click on the bottom of the trackpad, even though oh yeah, I do have mine set up. You can change the size of the zones of left and right click, which is something that I really like, but something that I don't like because the whole trackpad moves down. If I just shut up for a second and, and do a couple of clicks, It is a very loud sort of process. Now, something that I dislike in laptops is the really clicky, the finicky little tiny travel trackpads. And I'm not too fond of the click on the Apple trackpads. Um, I don't have one of these force touch ones. This is an older machine, but I'm not overly keen on that click. One of my favorite trackpad clicks is actually, if I bring up the R61, it's this sort of click. I think that is a really comfortable clicking sound. It feels really nice. It's kind of spongy. It doesn't have a really abrupt click, but it's very tactile at the same time. If you can be spongy and tactile at the same time, I don't know if that's possible. Now, this trackpad has that. It has a nice lot of travel, and it's got that little sponge feeling, but it's just a little bit too crazy because the whole trackpad is moving downward. I'm not overly keen on that, so I have found myself just tapping to click. But if you tap slightly too hard, the whole trackpad moves anyway. So yeah, I'm not crazy on the trackpad and uh, they've added the buttons back, the dedicated track point buttons. They've added that back in newer models, um, even though there are button zones here. But yeah, that's too much time talking about the trackpad. While we've got the laptop open, I do want to mention that it does have the ThinkPad logo down here with the little light up eye. So that looks really nice. Um, love or hate it, the ThinkPad design is definitely a solid one that stood the test of time. One thing about this machine, it is maybe somewhat bigger than some other 12.5 inch notebooks around. You can see the bezel is pretty thick. It looks better in person than it does in pictures and video, but still you can't get away from the fact that that is a pretty damn hefty bezel. But it's worth it. For all the features you get, it really is. And honestly, in person, it doesn't look as bad as it does in pictures and video, but yeah, a little bit thick, especially at the top. I don't mind the sides and the bottom. It's the top, yeah, the top is where it gets me. Anyway, 
Let's close her up. Something that you get on the back is you also get the same ThinkPad light up logo, which is really nice. When the system is on, the LED is on. Uh, when it's sleeping, the LED breathes. So that's super nice. Coming along to the back, you can see these sturdy metal substantial hinges and you can see some ventilation. Let's take a look at the ports on this machine. It definitely shines in terms of ports. Starting at the bottom, this is where you pull out the pen. You can get models without the pen, although I'm not too sure on um, where they were available. I believe that most do have the pen, so uh, that's just something that I want to mention. I'm not too sure which models do and don't, but I believe most do. At least the ones that I was looking at, most do. This is the power button for the machine. Of course, it's on the side as opposed to inside the laptop, because you may want to just use this in tablet mode or whatever, so the button's there as are the volume rockers, which can also be um, accessed from the FN keys as normal. And this is a rotation lock. Here we have a card reader, a USB port, which I believe is USB 3.0, a mini HDMI, which kind of sucks. It means you need a dongle or a special cable just to hook it up to HDMI. I would have loved to have seen a full HDMI port on this system, but mm, there we go. And there we have a Kensington lock at the end. Over on this side, we've got a pretty basic array, but something pretty nice. We've got a combo headphone jack, another USB port. We've got our charging input, and next to this, this is a little rubber block. And if you were to pull this rubber block out, it's kind of like um, a, uh, a stopper to stop stuff going into the connector, I guess, for the Lenovo ThinkPad one dock one something one link is it called the one link anyway it's kind of like the alternative to docking your thinkpad you can plug a cable which incorporates a power connector and this little proprietary connector in one you plug your original lenovo power brick into the one link i think that's what it's called and you get ethernet uh, another audio jack and four more USB ports, I believe, on like a docking block. And you can find them on eBay. Um, Ethernet is something that is missing from this machine. Of course, Ethernet is missing from most machines these days, uh, but you can get it on the dock. So that's something quite nice. Finishing up our tour of the machine, we've got the bottom. Something that's quite nice about this machine, even though it's got a soldered on RAM, it does have all standard Phillips screws that are visible on the bottom. So you just take them all out, pop the bottom cover off, and you have access to swap out the back battery of course it's not like a user swappable battery it's not an external kind of battery but you can change it um, if you have battery issues in the future you can also change your drive because as i said we will be doing that in the future it's just a 2.5 inch sata drive now being a normal two and a half inch drive of course you are slightly limited with the sata 3 interface if you're accustomed to faster SSDs, M.2 SSDs, PCIe SSDs, that sort of thing, uh, then going back to a SATA SSD for your boot device may be a little bit noticeable, especially if you're loading up big programs and stuff like that. Um, this guy has got a lovely speedy PCIe SSD, so you're talking pretty much double the speed, almost double the speed of a uh, fast SATA 3 SSD, but... <laughs> It is so much nicer to have an SSD in a machine like this than a hard drive, so definitely awesome. Again, just like the backlit keyboard, we've been spoiled, you know. SSDs are super fast, even on a SATA bus, crazy, crazy fast compared to what we were using 10 years ago or even 5 years ago. But uh, yeah, the time moves on. Uh, anyway, let's just uh, continue chatting. What I want to show you guys is one of the main reasons why I purchased this laptop, and I'm sorry for the glare. Let's see if I can minimize it. There we go. I'm sorry for the glare and the flicker, but I'm going to load up a program that some of my viewers may be familiar with. So for those of you who don't know, this is Martin MPC. This is a lovely little lighting control program. It's basically the exact same OS that runs on the Martin M series lighting consoles, and uh, it's just baked down into a PC application that is an extremely powerful tool for lighting. So, uh, this is one of the primary reasons why I purchased this machine, even though I made a video recently talking to you guys about my 088 Leapfrog lighting desk. I do foresee a time where I will hopefully be using this laptop and this software for my main lighting control. I'm hoping to purchase a, a Martin M-Play fader wing or an M-Touch. I haven't quite decided yet, but probably an M-Play for the max amount of buttons. And this will be my lighting control desk in a tiny package. I am far too familiar with carrying around my massive lump of a lighting desk now, and it is just not worth it. This is a much more powerful lighting control solution in a much smaller package. 
one thing that I do want to demonstrate is on the 12.5 inch screen, I was worried that this would be too small for me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am visually impaired. I've got pretty bad eyesight and um, this is quite a high resolution on a small display while trying to cram a lot of things onto the screen at once. So I was initially looking for a 14 inch model. You guys can probably tell why I was a little worried about the 12.5 inch model, but I can get so much on this screen. So this is like a little programmer screen. As you guys can see, I've got a nice lot of groups up here. I've managed to fit in the groups, some palettes. You can see uh, intensity palettes here that I've just got of my you know, most used intensities. I've got color palettes up here. I've also got my programmer down here so I can see what's going on. I've got my attributes here for all my fixtures. So plenty of space for all of this. And I've also got space for an on-screen keypad as well to control the um, the attributes of my system, control, uh, control the parameters of my fixtures. Sorry, I'm getting my words all muddled up. But what I'm trying to get at is there's absolutely tons of space. So if we go down here, uh, you can see another example of a window where I've got palettes stacked up, I've got groups, I've got a clock, I've got um, system usage. I've just thrown together a lot of windows to show you guys how much stuff I can squeeze onto this pretty much tiny 12.5 inch screen and how well MPC scales to uh, different monitors. Now, I assume that 1920 by 1080 is one of the most ideal monitors to run this software. Um, as, as a bare minimum, I wouldn't want to go any less, but still very, very impressive as to the amount of stuff I can squeeze on here. So why did I get a Yoga? You can get normal touchscreen ThinkPads that don't have any of the crazy hinge stuff going on. Well, I'll demonstrate why I went for the Yoga. And <laughs> this is just genius. So I've got a touchscreen. I've done all of my lighting programming. I'm sorted. I'm ready to run a show. Bang. Fader wing touchscreen, plug it in. That's my example. Just purely for that reason. You don't have a keyboard and mouse in the way. You can pretty much turn your laptop into just a display. Once I've finished with the keyboard, finished with the trackpad, this thing is multi-touch anyway. Look at all that space I've got. This is going to be a similar width to the um, control surface. The control surface will probably be about like that give or take and I'll be able to get a nice flight case that will hold this and all of the stuff that I need so the uh, fader wing and also cabling and chargers and things like that that is pretty much the only reason why I went for the yoga and of course with the yoga you get a lot of choice in terms of uh, different models and stuff there was a lot on eBay and I was looking at the newer version uh, the uh, ones that use the fifth generation Intel CPUs but the prices were climbing up there a little too much and there wasn't a lot of performance gain for that so a quick look at how I got this a little cheaper you guys can see that the keyboard is pretty shiny this is of course an indication as to the fact that the laptop has been used quite heavily as well as a good amount of use on the trackpad and the palm rest there is a little dent here on the palm rest as well as some damage on the corner you guys might not even be able to see that very clearly but there's damage there there's a little bit of damage around the rim of the laptop where else a little bit above the pen and also a little bit on the lid just sort of shiny surfaces and stuff like that but it's by no means hammered it really isn't it still looks absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't look brand new, but it looks really nice. So lighting software aside, let's just look at something a little bit more normal. One thing that I've really, I can't even tell how far away my hand is from the screen I'm sitting so far back. Um, one thing that I really like about this machine, if I just go to eBay, now I'm coming from a complete touchscreen noob kind of um, area because I've never had a touchscreen laptop before in my life. But something that I love, let's just search for N64s something that I search on eBay one heck of a lot, because as you guys know, I'm pretty much an N64 collector at this point. Again, chatting about my visual impairment, something that has pretty much stopped me from using Windows computers is the kind of really rubbish accessibility features in terms of zooming, even though they've tried to make a few improvements lately. Um, it's still nowhere near as good as OS X zooming. One thing that I love about the touchscreen, I just have direct access to pinching. So of course, me and my bad eyes, I have, this is a very nice experience for me. So I'm just browsing down the list. I see something that triggers my fancy. I need to make the price a bit bigger. I have a look and you know, this is just absolutely gorgeous and very fluid for me. Um, 
Of course, it's not system wide, you're just changing the size of the browser window, but even then, it's, it's absolutely great. And even if you want to use a system wide zoom, one thing that I really like about the driver for the touch screen is the fact that uh, I don't know if it's down to the driver or just Windows in general recognizing that you've got a touch screen, but you do get um, control of the zoomed portion within the window if that makes sense so just by tapping the edge it's not amazing but it's definitely a lot better than fumbling around with the trackpad when you're trying to use the touch screen but even just if i'm in a browser if i'm in a browser i'm totally sorted i've got lovely lovely zoom really like that about the touch screen and if i'm not typing stuff in if i'm browsing ebay something i like about the yoga is I'm now like this. I'm using the desktop version of a website. I'm sitting on the settee and I'm just looking up all of this stuff. It is phenomenal. It really is. It completely trumps my iPad because the screen is so much bigger. So I do far less scrolling. And uh, overall, this is super comfortable. And the fact that it's an IPS panel and everything, the stuff is so clear, it's so bright. It's a very nice experience. And God damn, N64 stuff is expensive these days. My word. People do okay selling some of this stuff, though. They really do. Find an N64 in your attic and you can pretty much have a family holiday after selling it. Jesus. So, a demonstration as to how my latest companion and I are getting on. I purchased it pretty much just for a lighting machine, but... I'm finding myself turning to it quite a bit, which is definitely more than can be said for most of the laptops that I have used that aren't Macs. I'm not an Apple fanboy, I'm not you know crazy about it, but I'm just so accustomed to OS X. Windows and I still have to have words from time to time. Even before making this video, I needed to wait for a Windows update, so that really sucked. But I'm finding this laptop very nice, and I hope you guys have enjoyed my little demonstration video. It's pretty unusual topic for myself. Oh, let's just do that. That is such a nice backlight. So subtle, but so brilliant. One thing about this machine is a lot of people think they're ugly, including Jess. When I pull this out of the box, she's just like, oh my word, Tom, what is that? But I think the ThinkPad design is gorgeous. It is a sexy little beast. Look at it there. Okay, I'm going to stop this video before it gets too weird. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at the gorgeous Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga, the 12.5-inch model, the original late 2013 one. You can get a 14, you can get updated ones. But if you can find one of these on eBay, good deal, just like I did very much worth it. Gorgeous laptop. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the SSD upgrade sometime in the future. There'll be more videos before then, but yeah, SSD, that's the next thing I'll be doing to this.